Hello, 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 hello there, my friends. Um, welcome to another um, quick um, tutorial. Um, this is based around um, animating a um, character within Maya 2015. Um, it's pretty um, similar to, obviously, all the other uh, 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 Maya programs. Uh, but I'm just going to show you, um, basically, um, how um, I would animate... Um, very briefly um, and basically using things called keyframes um, within our uh, program so keyframes um, is a lot like um, basically if you remember years ago um, you used to basically get a flip pad um, with loads of different pages and in the corner you used to write uh, draw a little character um, um, and on each page um, a, a movement for that character um, <coughs> this is exactly what and then what you would do so you used to flick through the page and it used to uh, uh, do a funky um, thing or, or, or a, a bit of animation uh, within them pages so what we're doing here is, is basically um, identical um, it's a lot more obviously advanced um, but basically um, that is exactly what we do and how we animate a character uh, within Maya and even uh, 3ds Max okay so this is um, a character that I've been uh, working on um, he's not yet finished this is Dobby um, from obviously the Harry Potter films um, and I'm just gonna use Dobby um, as an example um, of how we would actually um, get him to move um, and how we would move him up move him after basically um, all your geometries are set um, basically you've got his skeleton in place um, so if I just go to my show and I just take away my polygons uh, basically I'm left with this um, this is basically the skeleton of uh, Dobby um, and obviously um, this is actually connected to um, the uh, mesh um, of Dobby uh, which will help me um, basically move him now um, obviously I've set up all my different uh, movement parameters so I've set up all my um, you know my head movements um, my arm my arm movements so I could basically move my arms like so bring it in you know I can move my fingers if I want uh, but basically what we're doing here is just doing a very very quick animation uh, to show you how basically um, you know you know I would do it um, well most people would do it in general um, so basically what we're gonna do is obviously it's very important in animation to know um, where your character will be going or, or what your character will be doing you know your character um, must have a purpose and obviously you know if you've imitated um, a character say from a film um, uh, you know or a cartoon or whatever um, like I have obviously this is um, uh, you know copied this from you know the Harry Potter films he's got to sort of move um, very similar to the way uh, the character you know Dobby moves in the actual film otherwise you know it just becomes a different character um, so Obviously, I, you know, I'm going to just try and add, do a little bit of animation with the head um, and maybe, you know, his body and maybe his arms. So, uh, basically, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch my polygons back on so we can actually see Dobby here. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to focus on this bar here. Um, at the moment, I've got it set between 0 and 260 uh, keyframes or frames, um, but you can up that up by changing... Um, this little section here so if I click on 4 now I've got 400 uh, keyframes uh, ready for me to use straight away so obviously um, you've got also a start point um, and you've got an end point so obviously the end point being the end of your animation um, and not to be too insultive the start obviously being the start of your uh, animation without um, you know sounding too uh, uh, patronising um, but obviously, you know, there's a lot of people out there that work with um, different things that don't actually know that. So, um, I'd rather be detailed um, than not detailed, if that makes sense. So, let me just uh, put him into position, because obviously, your position will be the most um, important part of what Dobby does next. So, um, I'm just going to bring Dobby's arms down like so. Um, whoops. Uh, let's do this one. I'm just going to bring his arms down like so 
Um, so it's very important to get him into sort of a start position um, before you can actually sort of animate him. Otherwise, um, he's not going to look very good. So always remember, you know, get him the way you want him before you sort of start your first sort of keyframe. Uh, like so. Now, obviously, you know, you can sort of, you know, zoom in and out. Um, you know, don't worry, that will not be added to your keyframe or your final render. Um, so you can sort of, you know, you know, come down here, obviously press your, your alt button, bring it down here, you know, zoom into the hands, you know, put the hands into the position uh, you want. Uh, so if I just bring this here, you know, I can sort of bring his hand or oh, his thumb sort of down like so, you know, um, and sort of bend his fingers if I wanted to, um, to get him into a position that I would want to get him in. Uh, put that there. Let's bring that finger up like that. Let's sort of bring it like that. Okay, so let's go back up to Dobby's head for now. Um, obviously, you know, this is his, you know, his gut, you know, every part of this model, um, I've tried to make every part movable. Um, so obviously when he is finally animated and he is rendered, um, he is going to look the part. The more, um, you know, skeleton you've got, the more movement you've got, obviously the more realistic, um, you know, your characters are going to look um, when you sort of animate him. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to click on his neck and just make sure I've got, you know, the system right. Um, because obviously, you know, if you go and click a keyframe and you make a wrong move, obviously it's going to show up because, and then you'll have to sort of delete it um, and then sort of start, um, you know, your animation again. So let's put Dobby's head from here. We're going to come down to the very first keyframe and I'm just going to hit S on the keyboard. Um, to strike my first keyframe and then I'm just going to bring it to about 10 seconds or 10 frames long and all I'm going to do is rotate Dobby's head like so and to finish that particular keyframe we're just going to press S on the keyboard again now what we've done is we've created a 10 frame keyframe a 10 second keyframe uh, sorry my phone's going off at the moment so let me just quickly pause the video and find that who who that is and I'll be right back Apologize about that um, uh, bit of interference there. Um, so, right, where were we? Okay, so we've done a 10 second frame um, of basically um, um, Dobby's head moving, uh, like so. So what we can do is we can bring it sort of, you know, to the start of about here, as you can see, and I'm just gonna press S on the keyboard again. Uh, just probably move it up another 10 frames um, so we can uh, do another uh, bit of animation, sort of, turn his head up like that uh, press S on the keyboard again and now we should have um, a very sort of brief bit of animation of basically Dobby sort of turning his head um, and looking up now obviously each part of the body or each each element of the body needs to be animated separately so always remember you know if you're focusing on the head you know also focus on you know the nose the eyes um, you know the years so basically what I can do is I can actually go back um, to my keyframes here and I can put sort of a, a little bits of animation in between um, the keyframes I've already done so obviously we've gone all the way up to 20 here um, so I could sort of go here if I wanted I can press S on the keyboard again to have another keyframe just move it up to where I want it to go and then I could sort of get, you know, his ear, for instance, and I could sort of turn his ear up, um, sort of like to make it look like he's sort of listening, like so, and just, you know, whack another keyframe in there. So I can just bring it up like that, put it to about there, press S on the keyboard, say go up to about 20, um, which is the final part of that bit of animation, bring his sort of ear down here, I could grab this ear if I wanted and sort of animate that ear as well and just S on the keyboard again. So what that's done, that's given me uh, multiple pieces of animation within that 
20 seconds as you can see his head's going up and his ears turning as well so from there we can sort of start here s on the keyboard again bring it to about 30 frames bring that ear down like that and then we can sort of get his head and just drop his head down so he's looking down um, and just hit s on the keyboard again so obviously now what we should have if I just move this here we've got a nice little sort of fluid you know bit of um, animation uh, within our uh, production so obviously you know I've got my sort of eyes here um, these are my focal distances to where the eyes can look um, to make it a little bit more realer um, but yeah um, after you've done that you know and you've completed all your frames um, what you would do is obviously you would go back and you would render um, with your cameras into the quality um, that you know you feel fit that would work within your production but don't uh, be afraid to you know as like I said before if you bring your say to about here s on the keyboard again bring it to about 30 and then zoom out you know I could sort of hit his arm um, and bring that up like that hit that arm sort of you know move that like that <coughs> s on the keyboard so I've done that the wrong way let's try again All right let's put s on the keyboard bring that up to say about 30 uh, sort of bring the arm down um, let's look at this one let's bring this one here you know bring your sort of arm up like that press s again and then we should have um, as you can see Dobby sort of doing the robot dance sort of go back to here press s on the keyboard bring that past the 30 click our arm bring our arm up oh selected the wrong thing there that's why you should always zoom in <laughs> All right, let's go back to there like that let's uh, select his arm again bring the arm up like that obviously you know when you do it yourself um, you're gonna be focusing um, a lot more you know being a lot more detailed um, in what you're actually doing but yeah that is basically the general concept of how you would animate your character um, you know within Maya 2015 um, obviously like I say you know the, the more time you spend on it you know the better it's gonna look so to me you know a 400 frame animation would take literally hours to do um, just so I could get it you know absolutely perfect um, and fluid as well because flu obviously fluid is very important um, when you're animating um, a character because you know if it's not fluid it's gonna look too robotic I mean you can see that you know that's too robotic and when that's rendered it's gonna just be very very sort of glitchy you know and not very good so obviously I'd have a lot of more detail um, a lot more pieces of animation like sort of the eyes moving you know his nose sort of, you know maybe bending down um, his lip movements um, you know just to give it a little bit of realism uh, within my project so yeah I mean that's about it guys um, that is how you know I would animate uh, within my 2015 um, hope you've enjoyed this video do apologize again about the interference of the phone going off but obviously we don't predict these things we can just you know go with a flow um, so yeah I look forward to seeing you guys in the very next video